General Electric has expressed strong interest in partnering with India on the engine for its upcoming fifth-generation advanced medium combat aircraft, AMCA. GE Chairman Larry Culp confirmed the company's active pursuit of the project, highlighting its long-standing collaboration on Tejas jets using F-404 engines. The AMCA program was recently accelerated following Operation Sindor, with India seeking international collaboration for a high-thrust jet engine. GE faces competition from global firms like Safran and Rolls-Royce. Meanwhile, GE has begun scaling up delayed F-404 engine deliveries to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for the Tejas MK-1A, with the first engine delivered in March. Culp acknowledged delays, flagged by IF Chief AP Singh, and cited ongoing global supply chain pressures, driven by an aerospace industry super cycle. In a significant move to strengthen India's defense industrial ecosystem, the Vehicles Research and Development Establishment, VRD, a DRDO lab in Ahilyanagar, Maharashtra, recently transferred nine advanced land system technologies to 10 public and private sector companies. The transfer was marked by a formal event, attended by DRDO Chairman Dr. Samir V. Comet and other senior officials. Technologies included the CBRN Recce Vehicle MK2, a mounted gun system, and an anti-terrorist tracked vehicle. Other systems such as tank transporters, riot control vehicles, and decontamination systems were also licensed. An MOU was signed with COEP Technological University for collaborative research. Dr. Comet lauded the indigenous system's performance during Operation Sindor and urged industry stakeholders to prepare for production scale-up. In a strategic push to enhance its offensive and surveillance capabilities, the Defense Ministry is set to consider a Rs 10,000 crore proposal in late June for acquiring three I-Star intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance aircraft for the Indian Air Force. The sophisticated jets, likely sourced from global firms like Boeing or Bombardier, will be equipped with fully indigenous sensor and electronic systems developed by DRDO's Center for Airborne Systems CABS. These systems, already tested, will enable round-the-clock, multispectral surveillance and precision targeting of enemy assets, such as radar and air defense systems. Once operational, the I-Star fleet will place India among an elite group of nations with real-time battlefield monitoring and long-range strike coordination capabilities. The Indian Coast Guard recently enhanced its operational readiness by inaugurating a new dedicated jetty at Vizhinjam Harbour, Kerala. The facility, opened by ICG Director General Paramesh Savamani, is strategically positioned near international shipping lanes and the Vizhinjam Deepwater Port, allowing faster deployment for missions including coastal surveillance, anti smuggling, and rescue operations. The event saw participation from key officials across defense and maritime sectors. In parallel, the ICG marked World Environment Day 2025 on June 5 by launching eco-friendly initiatives across its national network. Focused on combating plastic pollution, activities included coastal cleanups, awareness campaigns, and community engagement efforts. The initiatives reinforced the ICG's commitment to marine conservation and its proactive role in national and global environmental efforts. India is taking a measured approach toward ratifying the High Seas Treaty, a global pact adopted in June 2023 to protect marine biodiversity beyond national jurisdictions. Although India signed the treaty in September 2023, it is still evaluating its compatibility with domestic laws like the Wildlife Protection Act and the Biological Diversity Act. The treaty requires parliamentary approval and institutional frameworks before ratification. Ahead of the June 9th UN Ocean Conference in France, where India's Earth Sciences Minister will speak, France has urged swift ratification by 28 more nations to meet the 60-country threshold for the treaty's enforcement. The agreement is vital for the global 30 by 30 target, aiming to protect 30% of oceans and land by 2030. China 
is reportedly set to begin delivering 30J-35A stealth jets to Pakistan from August 2025, offering them at a 50% discount. The move, China's first fifth-gen fighter export, has ignited backlash on Chinese social media, with users questioning Pakistan's financial credibility and China's production readiness. The announcement follows the Pahalgam terror attack, raising concerns that China is arming Pakistan as a proxy against India. While Pakistani pilots train in China, critics point to unpaid J-10C dues and doubt Pakistan's ability to afford such deals amid IMF dependency. Experts suggest the deal may not materialize soon, as the J-35 hasn't even entered Chinese service. Meanwhile, China continues promoting its jets using unverified Pakistani combat claims from Operation Sindor. During Operation Sindor, India launched a powerful aerial offensive with 80 fighter jets and 400 missiles, some reportedly nuclear-capable, targeting terror camps in Pakistan and POK. The operation destroyed nine terror bases and later damaged 11 Pakistani military installations in retaliation to Pakistani attacks. Acknowledging the devastation, Pakistan admitted that without an air defense system, it would have been buried under rubble. This admission came from Pakistan's minister Musadik Malik, who in a viral video from Washington, pleaded with the U.S. for advanced air defense systems and fighter jets. Malik is part of a 13-member delegation led by Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, seeking U.S. support, contradicting domestic Pakistani claims of victory. Despite publicly promoting a narrative of triumph, Pakistan secretly sought a ceasefire from India and now relies on American help to counter India's superior technology. The episode exposes deep cracks in Pakistan's internal narrative and its growing dependence on foreign defense aid. India is advancing its indigenous defense capabilities with the development of the supersonic target acquisition rocket, also known as STAR, a long-range air-to-air missile designed to neutralize enemy AWACS. Spearheaded by the DRDO, the STAR missile aims to provide the Indian Air Force with the ability to strike high-value aerial targets operating deep behind enemy lines, disrupting command and surveillance operations. Equipped with a cutting-edge liquid-fuel ramjet engine, the STAR missile promises sustained high-speed performance and extended range, potentially over 300 kilometers. Its aerodynamic design, advanced seeker technology, and radar evasive features are tailored for precise engagement of targets at high altitudes. The missile is currently in the final stages of development and is expected to be integrated with frontline combat aircraft such as the Su-30 MKI, Rafale, and Tejas. Once operational, STAR will complement India's existing beyond visual range missile systems, notably the Astra series, and significantly enhance the IF strategic strike capability. Developed under the Make in India initiative, STAR reflects India's growing expertise in propulsion, guidance, and aerospace materials and represents a potential future export. Its deployment, will mark a major milestone in India's efforts to achieve self-reliance in advanced defense technologies. In a major step toward self-reliance in military aviation, DRDO is preparing to test its upgraded dry Kaveri jet engine on a Tejas light combat aircraft. Developed by the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, the engine, will be integrated into an older Tejas Limited series production model for in flight validation. Initially developed for the Guttuck UCAV, the Dry Kaveri has already achieved 49 to 50 kN thrust in ground tests. A new domestically developed afterburner aims to raise thrust to 80 kN, comparable to the 78.7 kN of the current GF404 engine, powering the Tejas MK1 fleet. While the Indian Air Force has flagged safety concerns about using an uncertified engine on a single-engine fighter, GTRE plans to proceed confidently. Before the Tejas trials, high-altitude tests are scheduled for September 2025 in Russia, using a modified Eliashin 276. 
weighing 1,180 kilograms, heavier than the GF404. GTRE is working with Midhani to reduce the engine's weight using advanced alloys. The Kaveri project, initiated in 1989, aims to reduce India's dependence on imported engines. A successful flight trial would mark a major milestone in indigenous defense capabilities with full certification expected by 2032. India's flagship fifth-generation fighter jet program, the AMCA, is heading into a pivotal phase, with the Aeronautical Development Agency expected to finalize a production partner by the end of 2025. This move follows the Defense Ministry's approval in May 2025 of a new industry partnership model, enabling private firms to compete alongside state-owned Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. The rupees 15,000 crore program cleared by the Cabinet Committee on Security in March 2024, aims to strengthen India's air power and reduce reliance on foreign military technology. HAL, despite its contributions to the AMCA's structural design and Tejas fighter production, faces questions over its capacity due to existing commitments. Meanwhile, 24 private firms have shown interest in joining a consortium to lead the AMCA's production. The jet is envisioned as a 25-ton twin-engine stealth fighter with supercruise and multi-role capabilities. The AMCA Mark I will feature GE's F414 engine, while the Mark II will use a more powerful engine co-developed with Francis Safran. The first prototype is scheduled for rollout by 2026-27, with a maiden flight in 2028 and induction by 2034, positioning India among elite stealth jet-producing nations. That's all from YTS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.